pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Regular meeting of the Board of Education will come to order. Call the roll, please. Kara. Fisher. Here. Hill. Here. Huey. Here. Loman. Here. Wrigley. Here. Six members, uh, sorry, five members of the Board of Education are present. Quorum is established. Uh, Mr. Barra is traveling out of the state for business and sends his regrets this evening. First item on the agenda is approval minutes. Those minutes are from the closed meeting of uh, April 2nd, special board meeting of April 23rd, the regular board meeting of April 29th, the first closed session of April 29th, and the second closed session of the 29th. Recommendation would be for approval of those minutes as presented. So move. Motion by Mr. Huey. Second. Second by Mr. Fisher. Questions or comments on the minutes? Call the roll, please. Huey. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Hill. Aye. Loman. Aye. Wrigley. Aye. Motion carries. Communications, public comments, and participation. We will begin with board applause. Mr. Hill, would you like to start this evening? Yeah, I'd just like to uh, uh, wish all of the staff at Pekin High School a great uh, start to summer break. Wish all the students the same and look forward to seeing them all starting back next year. Excellent. Mr. Lohman. I would also like to, at the close of this year, thank the faculty and staff for uh, executing the mission and also the JROTC for their participation in the uh, honor flight and the uh, Memorial Day presentation. Excellent. Mr. Huey. I uh, want to commend everybody who was involved with graduation this year, and I thought it came off particularly well indoors. There are some advantages to that. And I have to single out one thing. I thought the uh, uh, duet singing of the national anthem was outstanding. I just thought that was excellent. In fact, I think the national anthem ought to be sung that way all the time. <laughs> so we do it right. Very good. Mr. Fisher. Uh, I'd just like to congratulate all the seniors, uh, wish them best, and uh, looking forward to the students for next year, the new ones coming in, and uh, the faculties, and hopefully we have a great year next year. Excellent. Uh, as is normal around this time of year, my uh, board of applause also echoes uh, those who uh, mentioned graduation. Um, I was uh, particularly pleased with a couple things. Uh, Dr. Owen's remarks uh, were excellent, in my opinion. Uh, as well as uh, the decision to have it inside. We all wanted it to be outside, especially, you know, about 25 minutes before. Um, it was looking like, you know, outside was the place to be, even though we were going to be inside. But uh, uh, it started to cloud up and got really windy. And I know other schools in the area had theirs outside. It was pretty miserable with the wind that was going on. So uh, excellent uh, job for our administration for pulling that off and the faculty that was there to assist as well as the staff. So. Very good. Uh, summary of one to one. We have uh, Cynthia and Eric. Welcome. My name is Cynthia Hinderleiter, and I'm the Department Chair of Instructional Technology. And this is Eric Glind. He is the Network Administrator. And we are the smallest department in the school, but I like to say we're the mightiest because without us, nothing runs. So we are here to talk about um, our year in review. So this is our very first year going one-to-one -one for the new board members. At the beginning of August, we gave each student a Chromebook, kind of sent them off on their way. All of the teachers had had professional development for about the last two years. Um, in regards to going one-to-one. -one. And so these are just a couple of the highlights and a couple of things that happened in the IT department over the last year. So one of the things that we did, oh, well maybe, sorry, there we go. One of the things that we did when we were looking at going one-to-one -one is we figured, we were trying to figure out who was going to fix over 1,800 Chromebooks. So we visited different schools, looked at different models, talked to different people, and what we did was we found nine students who were seniors that we called Dragon Tech Support, and they were responsible for fixing our Chromebooks. This year we had 541 fixes. 
So these were all completed by the students. The majority of them were battery fixes. Those went into our older Chromebooks that the seniors and half of the junior class used. The rest of them were probably broken screens. Students would put the Chromebooks in their backpacks. They wouldn't realize that all of their books pushing up against it could break a screen, or they would drop them or have some other mishaps. So with those 541 Chromebook fixes, we didn't charge labor at all. And so there's a neighboring school district that is also one-to-one, -one, and every time that a device is broken, doesn't work, or has a warranty issue, they take it to a local business and end up paying between $20 to $100 for each device. And so by not charging our students labor and having our own students do it, we saved a substantial amount of money when it all came down to it. When a device was broken, we then would put the charge on the student's account. So if it was a screen, it could be $45. Um, if it was a keyboard, it could be $30. And so we charge the students the same amount that we get the parts for. One of the things that we did this year is when the seniors were graduating, we gave the seniors the opportunity to buy their Chromebook for $25. So included in that $25 was the case, the charger, and the Chromebook. And about 45% of our seniors took advantage of that. We actually were at Tech Day um, in May, and we were talking with Representative Mike Eunice, and we told him of our plan to give the seniors something, a device to take back with them, and he included it in his opening remarks. So he was very proud of the fact that not only why we had our students use a device here, we give them the opportunity to leave with one as well. So now that we have 55% of those Chromebooks back that the, other that the other seniors didn't buy, we are also able to work on our part inventory. So next year we'll be able to buy less parts and in order to keep our one-to-one -one operation going in terms of Dragon Tech support. Next year we also have 10 Dragon Tech support interns, so we'll have one extra. So that will be nice and we should be able to fix more or you know the same amount with hardly any problems. Um, one of my job responsibilities is also to handle the social media side of things. And so this is just kind of a brief overview of what happened with social media this year. Facebook is by far our fastest and our easiest way to disseminate information besides a phone call. So that is, Facebook seems to be the one place where everybody goes to look for information. So, and Facebook is kind of funny because they will give you your insights over like the last three months, but you can't get your insights over a year. And so I pulled some numbers, and just between April and May, we had 9,878 page views. So that means nine, over 9,000 people came to the Pekin Community High School page to see what was going on. We had 139 new page likes. So right now I think we're around 5,800 page likes, so that's 5,800 people that come to Pekin Community High School and follow it. Um, in that same time of two weeks, we had 86,075 people be engaged in our posts. So that's a pretty good number. A couple, of, you know, definitely doubles the size of Pekin. And it tells you exactly how many people are engaging in our post, liking our post, commenting our post, or sharing our posts. We had 14,382 people watch our videos, so people are very engaged. Facebook is always like our number one social media. That's the number one way that we get information out, and it's the one that's most liked. It's also the one that the parents and the grandparents are on. So with Twitter, over the last 24 days, we had 93,500 different impressions. So that could be from students. It looks like um, not grandparents usually aren't on Twitter, but usually moms are on Twitter. That's what it seems to be. A lot of females, they say. But so that's not very bad either. We also have an Instagram page that just has 1,189 followers. That's where we get the most like from students. To be completely honest, the only way we're going to 100% reach our students is Snapchat, and we are not wanting to do that. Um, we did offer filters a couple of times this year for homecoming, for some basketball games, for some events, and they were heavily used. I think um, our very first homecoming filter had like 3,000 people that used it, but we have no desire to advertise on Snapchat or to try to manage Snapchat. So when looking at um, our top Facebook posts of the year, and this is kind of hard to read, but our number one top Facebook post of the year with 21,500 people reached 
was when we gave Mr. Emmons, or when Dr. Owens gave Mr. Emmons his degree back at the beginning of the school year. So that was definitely the most popular post. And that actually spurred another post that I started doing calling PCHS Honors Our Heroes. And whenever somebody would graduate from the military or somebody had a picture of somebody in military service, I would start out a post kind of with that byline and then those were always very popular. Our second most popular Facebook top post of the year was when the principals wrapped to Ice Ice Baby to cancel school for a snow day. The third one was the boys basketball playoffs with 10,300 people engaged. Graduation pictures that Mrs. Smith put together was 10,100 post engagements and so that was huge. People could go and get pictures of their graduates. The drumline send offs that Mr. Um, that Barry has decided to put together at the beginning of the school year, those get a lot of posts. The Hamilton dancers that were featured in Chicago last month had 7,800. And last but not least, um, PCHLs helped find a jewelry box that had been lost for like 20 years. And so that was a really good story as well. Other things that we've started to do with Facebook is the senior class bought a live streaming box. So we're able to stream things to YouTube that we can then put the posts on our face to on our Facebook post. We had over 1,800 people that viewed graduation. So people that were unable to attend graduation could then watch it on our YouTube post. Another thing that I've been doing is been creating events of different things happening at the school. So I did a graduation event, um, Dragon Pride. That way people can say they're going, they can tag other people in it, and they can also get reminders that they had signed up for the event and what time and where it is. One other thing that we added this year was instructional coaches. And so we needed a way that teachers could get professional development, even if they just had a question or they had issues um, in the classroom or if they needed just some tips or if they just wanted to know how to do something new. And so we added an instructional coach from each department. And we, what we did is we kept track and we logged and we looked at their hours. And over this school year, we had 551 interactions logged. So they were used a lot. People would go to them. They were kind of seen as the experts in their department, whether it be with technology or just um, teaching things in general. And so that was a great success. Now I'm going to hand this over to Eric, and he's going to handle kind of the more technical side of things. I'm sure hers is probably a little more interesting than mine will be. <laughs> so it's been about a year since I arrived at PCHS. Uh, you know, glad to say that we've got a lot accomplished. Uh, you know, from board members that were here um, in August last year, you remember that um, I got to meet you kind of not on a good foot uh, coming to you and, you know, having to ask to, you know, make an expense to kind of get us where we needed to be to make sure our one-to-one -one was a success this year. Uh, so we kicked that off with our wireless mobility infrastructure upgrade. Installing a new controller and about 185 access points. Um, I'm happy to say that went very well. Um, we have had no major issues with our wireless throughout the building um, outside of you know, normal issues that you're going to have. So uh, compared to you know, last year and year before that, um, we're doing really well there. So happy about that. Another big thing we discussed during that time was the network discovery, cleanup, and documentation. Uh, this ended up being a little bigger project than we thought it was going to be. We actually just uh, we broke into two phases, and we actually just wrapped up phase one a couple months ago, which was really digging in deep and seeing what do we have out there, uh, what still needs to be documented, uh, what needs to be really cleaned up. So that phase is kind of done, and then moving into the summer, we're going to kick off phase two, uh, which is where we'll actually start doing the major cleanup and uh, you know, really getting things where it needs to be. Security improvements, uh, you know, there's always room for improvement there. And you know, when I talk about security improvements, it's not only things like you know, antivirus and what we're doing on you know, the physical computer end, but it's also user awareness and you know, how we're uh, having, handling different security policies within, within our, with our staff and our students. So, a copier and printer refresh. Uh, we did that in December. Uh, during the course of a week, we came in and replaced our whole fleet. Uh, we had a pretty good cost savings on that as well, ended up saving about $45,000 a year on our uh, maintenance agreement with our copiers and printers. Another big piece of my job, you know, obviously I handle a lot of day-to-day -day activity. Uh, you know, I handle tickets. Uh, you know, we constantly have break-fix issues. We constantly have network issues. But another big part of my job uh, really is the long-range planning, um, roadmap, upcoming project planning, uh, writing RFPs. So did quite a bit of that this year too. 
uh, one of my professional goals this year was to create a roadmap and a log rates plan for PCHS, uh, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Upcoming project planning, and then this year, uh, since August 1st, or up until August 1st, we had closed over 1,300 tech support tickets. So that's primarily just three of us in the department that handled that many tickets this year. So very active department, very busy department, uh, a lot going on every week. I discussed a few minutes ago the IT infrastructure roadmap. Um, really, we're cr trying to lay this out and create a vision and a plan for moving forward with future IT infrastructure projects. Uh, before my arrival here, uh, kind of the way to do IT infrastructure projects was to buy it, put it in, and let it sit until it died. And then we were in a position where we're coming to the board, we're coming to the administration saying, this is dead, help, we need the money, we need to do this now. And it was always an emergency. So uh, the approach to IT really is to look at that, you know, four to five year re refresh cycle. Uh, you end up saving money over time because you're not scrambling at the last minute, paying all that extra cost and getting something in. So that's what we're trying to do and create here. Really, it's great for budgeting and resource planning. And like I said, uh, this plan is gonna be a five-year vision. So I won't go through every single one of these items, but really it hits uh, a lot of our major infrastructure, like our firewalls, our switches, um, our antivirus, our cameras. So you'll notice that this year we're doing some of that work, but then into the future, we've started planning for, you know, when are we gonna start making major purchasing decisions? Uh, when are things going end of life? And we need to start refreshing. And then the green, obviously, is we're actually gonna go ahead and do a refresh on that. And some of that came out of our uh, initial discovery at the beginning of the year when we had a contractor come in and do some of that work for us uh, to kind of say, you know, here's your layout now, here's where you guys should be in three years to five years, and then we kind of adjusted from there. So coming up in the 1920 school year, uh, it's going to be another busy school year. Uh, you're kind of kicking it off. We're doing data center refresh this summer. Um, we're also completing the network reconfig that I talked about previously. Uh, we also had some E-rate funds that we needed to uh, spend down, and those are uh, funds that we get from the government, and those were expiring at the end of the year. Uh, we get a pretty good match. It's not really a match. We uh, actually get 60% of our projects funded here, so um, it's really great to take advantage of those funds. And I had identified over in uh, F Building that uh, we have some failing cable, and we have some cable that needed to be ran over there in order to uh, you know, accomplish wireless goals and uh, just PC goals in general. So. We're starting uh, that this summer. Obviously, we have 500 new Chromebooks that are becoming into the environment. Uh, we're doing a full teacher and clerical staff PC refresh. Uh, cameras and software are being upgraded. Uh, we're upgrading our internet bandwidth, which uh, for current board members or you know, board members that were here in August, we talked about that as well. Uh, end user security is always an ongoing thing. Uh, organization security wide. Uh, disaster recovery was a really big one for me. You know, right now we don't have great disaster recovery plan for you know, those events, uh, you know, big and small. Maybe it's just a, a server that died, or it could be a fire in the server room, or it could be a full mass, you know, tornado. Uh, we don't have a great plan to get us to the point where, okay, we need this server, this resource. Uh, how are we going to spin that up and get that going? So uh, we kind of put together a plan on that. We'll be implementing that this summer as well. And then finally, just uh, developing processes and documentation for continuous support of the environment. You know, one thing that uh, I didn't have when I walked into this role was documentation or uh, kind of looking, you know, a good vision back. So, uh, you know, I want to I want to leave. You know, whenever whenever I depart from this job, if I ever depart from this job, I want to leave the next person with more documentation than I had. We've always called it the hit by the bus plan. You know, if I don't show up for work tomorrow, can somebody walk into my job and fill my role? And um, that was something I didn't really have, had to create a lot of that on the fly. So uh, really glad to be doing that. It's important. It's a tedious part of IT, but it's an important part of IT. So I told you I'd keep it brief. That's kind of my presentation. Any questions for Cynthia and I? Uh, you don't need to worry about writing your uh, forward plan until at least 63, 64, because we hope you stick around. <laughs> both of you. Well, I hope you're you both right? at that point. I love Peking High. It's been a great place for really. yeah. And, and honestly, no, I, I think I can speak for the board, and I'm sure there's comments that the board members want to make, but the, the impact that both of you have made in, in the last couple of years has just been phenomenal. So thank you for your efforts. Thank you. I have a couple of questions and comments. First of all, I comment that uh, I sat in on the session at State of the uh, District with the uh, three gentlemen students for, that were uh, some of your tech support. Very, very impressive. 
and of course coming from CTE, I was also pleased that they were coming from CTE. For those who wouldn't know, uh, all of these support students have gone through all of our programs here in the Career and Technical Ed Department. So their training was here and then they put it to very good use. My other question, I don't know that it's appropriate to ask you, but you may have some reaction to this. We're talking about the technical side, which is your concern on that. Any observations about uh, classroom use of, of one on one? Uh, and that could fill a whole evening, I realize, but it, was it being integrated to a large degree in the classroom? Do you have any uh, measure of that at all? Um, we don't have exact statistics like how much it's being mm -hmm. used on a daily basis. But I think that um, we did do a student poll, and I think when we looked at those numbers, that five out of seven hours of every school day that a student was taking their Chromebook out and using it. Of course, there's always going to be those classes that don't lend themselves to one-on-one -on -one sure. instruction, especially down in the CTE department because they're using other devices or they're doing other hands-on things. But for the most part, I would say that a student goes throughout the school day and that they're definitely using their Chromebook probably 60 to 70 percent of the time for sure. Good. That's what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to commend these two because um, a year ago we were in a situation obviously where we were trying to hire who ended up being Eric and I think a little bit panic stricken we had come off a hack, hacking attack that took a while to rebuild from and um, knowing we were walking into one-to-one -one thinking. I remember last year at this time saying, I think we're in line, you know, and learning very quickly within two weeks when Eric was like, you need to come see me because we are not ready to go. So um, these two have done phenomenal amounts of work in terms of the backbone of IT, as well as the instructional coaching part of IT, as well as the, the social media aspect, which has been a plug for us these last two years to try to get our positive messages out. So I just wanna commend both of them in front of you guys because it, it really has been a breath of fresh air. We all held our fingers, like just crossed our fingers when school started last year and the, the first day didn't go all that great. But <laughs> after about the first three hours and everything settled in and, and we figured out the problem pretty quickly, Everything from then on really has been pretty smooth sailing. And that is a testament to the work that they do because a lot of the work that was done this year had never been done before, never been tried before. It's how do you collect Chromebooks, right? We're gonna figure it out and we're gonna think we've got it figured out, but it's really the first time. So we'll let you know after Thursday how that goes when we collect 1,800 Chromebooks. But they really just jump in and get the job done. We meet weekly with them to talk about anything and everything. We joke with Eric that every week he just asks for more money. Um, but <laughs> it's been two weeks now and he yes, hasn't actually asked for money. <laughs> so we were excited about that. But um, they really truly have done a, a great job in, in just, uh, I think, wrangling the kids too in terms of Dragon Tech Support, the work they've done, and now with Mr. Shea coming on board, who's a direct, you know, um, graduate from us and literally started work the day after graduation with us. So um, I just thank them for the work that they've done and, and really have been excited about this year because it, if it went well, it was going to go well. If it went very poorly, it was going to be a very long year and it tech-wise was a pretty quick year and, and pretty successful. So thank you. And thank you to our administration for the support that we have and all of you because I mean these type of programs obviously don't happen without good support there as well. So we felt very blessed with the support that you well, I, I commend you on your presentation, and I can let you know I'm an IT's nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you don't have to deal with anything. <laughs> I try. That that was, you know, that means a lot for uh, everybody involved in what you guys accomplished. I would just like to applaud you too. From an outsider looking in the last two years, it's now listening to your presentation. It it was hard to tell that you built this program program from the ground up. So we applaud, I applaud you for that, and it's something to be said that your administration is com giving you com accommodation for that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. So moving on to item four, which would be the approval of claims. 
uh, we would seek board approval uh, to pay the monthly warrants in the amount of $2,246,147.56. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Hill. Second. Second by Mr. Huey. Questions or comments on the warrants? Call the roll, please. Hill. Aye. Huey. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Norman. Aye. Wrigley. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, I was hoping, Mr. Hill, you'd go in and jump in and read that for me. Sorry, you were, you were quick on the draw. <laughs> That's all right. So item five is the seating of a new member. Uh, we have the opportunity to seat uh, Mrs. Amanda Brown uh, to fill the seat that was recently vacated by Karen Holheimer. So Amanda, if you'll step to the dais, I'll come down there and we'll do this wonderful oath. <laughs> Yes, thank you for reminding yeah. me of that, that I skipped public comments. Um, do you want to copy this? Are you good? Okay, good. Um, Amanda, welcome. Um, you went through a pretty uh, rigorous uh, application and uh, interview process. We're looking forward to the next two years of serving with you. Um, if 35 words are good enough to elect a president, I don't know why the state of Illinois requires that you say 329. Um, but we'll do them together, and then you can join us on the dais next to Mr. Fisher. So if you'd raise your right hand and repeat after me, uh, I, Amanda Lynn Brown, do solemnly swear. I, Amanda Lynn Brown, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of member of the Board of Education. The duties of the office of the Board of Education. Of Pekin Community High School. Of Pekin Community High School. In accordance with the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the laws of the State of Illinois. And the laws of the State of Illinois. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I further swear that. I further swear that. I shall respect taxpayer interests. I shall respect taxpayer interests. By serving as faithful protector. By serving as faithful protector. Of the school district's assets. Of the school district's assets. I shall encourage and respect. I shall encourage and respect. The free expression of opinion. By my fellow board members and others. By my fellow board members and others. Who seek a hearing before the board. Who seek a hearing before the board. While respecting the privacy. While respecting privacy. Of students and employees. Of students and employees. I shall recognize. I shall recognize. That a board member. That a board member. Has no legal authority as an individual. Has no legal authority as an individual. And that decisions can be made. And that decisions can be made. Only by a majority vote. At a public board meeting. At a public board meeting. I'll I shall abide by majority decisions of the board. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board. While retaining the right. While retaining the right. To seek changes in such decisions. To seek changes in such decisions. Through ethical and constructive channels. Through ethical and constructive channels. As part of the board of education. As part of the board of education. I shall accept responsibility for my role. In the equitable and quality education, in the equitable and quality education of, every student in the district. of every student in the district. I shall foster with the board, I shall foster with the board extensive, participation of the community, extensive participation of the community, formulate goals, formulate goals define, outcomes, define outcomes, and set the course for Pekin Community High School. I shall assist in establishing a structure and an environment, a structure and an environment designed, to all designed to ensure all students have the opportunity to obtain their maintain potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement and all conditions affecting the education of our children. In compliance with state law. I shall serve, I shall serve as, education's key advocate as education's key advocate on behalf of students and our community's school to advance the vision of Pekin Community High School. I shall strive to work together. I shall strive to work together 
with the district superintendent, with the district superintendent to, lead the school district to lead the school district toward fulfilling the vision, toward fulfilling the, vision the board has created. The Fostering excellence, for every student fostering excellence for every student in the areas of academic skills, in the areas of academic skills knowledge, knowledge, citizenship, citizenship and, personal development. and personal development. Congratulations. Yeah, that was an oath. <laughs> Welcome. At this point, item six is new business. It would be a request for closed session regarding the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. Is there a motion for closed session? So moved. Motion by Mr. Hill. Second. Second by Mr. Fisher. Call the roll please. Hill? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Brown? Aye. Huey? Aye. Roman? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Motion carries and we will return as soon as possible. The board has reconvened from closed session. Uh, first item was one that I skipped, public comments. Are there any public comments to come before the board? Hearing none, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the consent agenda. Is there an item on the consent agenda that a board member would like removed for a separate vote? Hearing none, I would seek a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Motion by Mr. Hill. Second. Second by Mr. Huey. Questions or comments on the consent agenda? <coughs> call roll. Call roll, please. Hill? Aye. Huey? Aye. Brown? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Loman? Aye. Ridley? Aye. Motion carries. Item 6.3 Athletic Trainer Services from Midwest Orthopedic, Dr. Owens. So you will see on page 146 a uh, contract um, with proposed contract with our athletic trainer services from Midwest Orthopedic. Uh, it is a little bit different in that it is a three-year contract up to, up to this point. The last couple contracts have been one-year contracts. They've been for $6,000. The main difference here and why the price is different uh, in terms of the $14,500 is that up to this point, we've had an athletic trainer here for injury checks twice a week. Um, Barry suggested that we should probably have a trainer here every day of the week because he's a little concerned that we do have coaches who are doing taping and things like that that they may not be certified to do and it'd be better if we had a trainer at, at all of our um, practices in terms of injury, che injury checks. In addition, uh, the sports that they are at um, it also include, I think there were two editions of both softball and wrestling maybe, or track. So basically it covers all of the main sports uh, as well as five days a week. So our recommendation, uh, the, the other piece just to back up, um, a couple years ago we did put this out to bid um, in the community and, and Midwest Orthopedic was by far um, still the most reasonable. The only other bid we got was from Athletico. Did they even put a bid in at the time? I think they, yeah, they, they did, but it was um, way, way different from uh, Midwest Orthopedic. And to be honest with you, we've had Miss Midwest Orthopedic for several years now and have always been happy with them. Um, they're here when they need to be. And then honestly, too, if there's other events outside of that contract, um, that Barry hires them for their contract rate is really reasonable in terms of things like the holiday tournament, maybe a track and field invite that we're hosting that are outside of the scope of what they typically would be at. So it is our recommendation for board approval of the agreement with Midwest Orthopedic um, for the period of 36 months beginning August, 2nd, or August 1st, 2019 in the amount of $14,500 per year as presented. We've heard the request. Is there a motion? 
So moved. Motion by Mr. Huey. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Lohman. Questions or comments on the agreement with Midwest Orthopedic? So do they provide a, uh, uh, at, the, at the events, they, do they provide, uh, is it a doctor or a trainer? At trainer, certified trainer. athletic trainer. Okay. Yep. Okay. Further questions? Mm -hmm. Call the roll, please. Huey? Aye. Lohman? <clears throat> Aye. Brown? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Hill? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, to 2019-2020 parent student handbook changes. So we come to, to you tonight with uh, changes of the student parent handbook. Um, they are summarized on page 149. Uh, to be honest with you, most of the changes that you can see are grammatic changes uh, in terms of of different words, some that were one or two that were misspelled, um, talks about uh, juuling uh, in addition to smoking, things like that. There are no major substantive changes uh, to our handbook, um, but what you see there are, are just, um, honestly, a lot of pronoun changes in, in throughout. Um, the other thing that we have the intention of adding, obviously, is something we talked about last month, and that is the handbook language that will be added for in-school intervention uh, because that will be an intervention that we're going to have um, for consequence next year. Uh, it gives the guidelines to that, what the expectations will be, so that will be an add to the student parent handbook. Um, and then you can kind of see how that integrates with consequences for certain offenses um, that will be listed out. So it would be our recommendation for board approval of the proposed 1920 student parent handbook changes as presented. We've heard the request from the administration. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Motion by Mr. Lohman. Second. Second by Mr. Fisher. Questions or comments on the changes? Uh, I notice on page four, the some of the offenses are now outlining fines. Is that is that something new, or have we we always had fines? How, how has that worked? We have always had fines. It's just specifying what they are. Okay. Yep. Further questions or comments? I think the thought is if we specify what they are, maybe that's another deterrent. Call the roll, please. Lohman? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Brown? Aye. Hill? Aye. Huey? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Motion carries. Item 6.5, agreement with Taswood Center for Wellness. So on page 154, you will see a contract um, for counseling services. This is something that we came to you with uh, last year at this time with a desire to hire uh, and the ability to hire an outside counselor outside of the seven counselors we have. And remember that we have two social workers as well as a, a school psych here on campus. Um, but we continue to see um, time being an issue in terms of those high need, major crisis, students in major crisis, being able to not only manage them, but also if they were hospitalized, if they were coming back after hospitalization, intakes of those kinds, that, that the time was just an issue in terms of how to deal with one particular student when you have all of these other students that you really need to, to have an impact on. So um, we were able, um, with your approval last year, to hire Sarah Stuber um, as a three-day-a-week contract employee through Taswood who came into the building, I believe, Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Monday, Wednesday, Friday of every week. Um, she was required to keep data of how many students she saw when she was here, how many minutes she spent, um, if the student had an IEP or not, and she has been phenomenal. She has been able to have an impact on the, the highest need kids, which in turn has allowed our staff, our counselors, social workers, school psychs, to focus on those tier two kids that are on the bubble of really starting to fall away or really needing some extra attention, those were the kids we really wanted to impact, knowing that if we had another person who could kind of take that kid who was sucking everybody's time and really deal with them and honestly help them 
outside of peak and high get resources that they may need that we don't have here, which is, is primarily what some of those students need. She's been phenomenal, so we did approach uh, Taz would if they would be willing to entertain and give us a quote for a four day a week um, because we feel like the need is there we really weren't keen on a five day a week and to be honest with you I really don't know if Sarah has the desire to work five days a week because she has her own private practice in addition to working here um, so we did approach Taswood um, and asked them to consider a four day a week and, and negotiated the terms of that um, so that would be 152 days um, where we have a counselor here for eight hours um, a day and I believe the I'm trying to find here with the contract being, let me find it, um, $41,226.10. Um, I believe this year we paid right around $28,000. Um, so to get her for the four days a week, obviously they had to offer her now insurance because she's more than a part-time employee. Uh, so that, that ranged that, but we did <clears throat> negotiate that. I think she, she's been a huge add the, the other addition she's been able to do is she's been able to present to staff and do some professional development because, as you know, our focus this year has been helping teachers with strategies on how to deal with students who are high need in their classroom, what to do, what to say, how to, how to resource those students out so that people are not feeling overwhelmed. So our recommended board approval is to enter into the contractual agreement again for next year with Taswood Center for Wellness for additional counseling services as presented. We've heard the request. Is there a motion to that effect? So move. Motion by Mr. Loman. Second. Second by Ms. Mrs. Brown. Questions or comments on the agreement? Call a roll, please. Loman? Aye. Brown? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Hill? Aye. Huey? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Motion carries. 2019 2020 Consolidated District Plan, Dr. Owens. So this is something new <laughs> that um, Carla and I, and we invited Sheila to the party as well, um, have been working on. So typically this time of year, we start to talk about the title grant, title funds that are gonna be available for us to write a grant, which you'll see the next action item obviously is for permission for us to write the grant. Prior to writing the grant this year, they are requiring that every school district create what's called a consolid district plan which is one plan that will encompass all your grants. So the IDEA grant, which is a special ed grant, your title grant, those are our two main ones at the high school level. Some elementary schools have different grants that they have available to them. But it's one umbrella plan that encompasses all your grants. So supposedly the thought is you fill out this huge plan one time and then you don't have to do it for every grant that you're writing from then on. Now we will see how this plays out, but we are not allowed to even start writing the title grant until our consolidated district plan is approved by the state. In order for me to submit it, to even be considered for approval from the state, I have to have board approval from all of you. So I am asking um, for recommended board approval of the 1920 consolidated district plan as presented. Obviously, if it's approved, then I put that date on the plan and I submit it to the state. My guess is it'll get kicked back a few times, hopefully only, just as our title grant does for fixes and things like that. So I'm not sure this is something that we have to do yearly yet. I'll, I'll keep you posted, but this is definitely something that is new um, that supposedly is going to expedite our ability to write grants moving forward. We will see if that comes true. Um, but that is why that is on the agenda tonight. Is there a motion for the consolidated district plan? So move. Motion by Mr. <laughs> Huey. Second. Second by Mr. Hill. Questions or comments on the plan? Hopefully it makes our lives easier, but we know the state of Illinois, so chances are it probably won't. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> Call the roll, please. Huey? Aye. Hill? Aye. Fair. Brown? Fisher? Aye. 
Bowman? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, item 6.7, request permission to submit the title grants for titles 1, 2, and 4. So typically we ask for this in June, but since I put the district plan on, I thought I'd just get it all out of the way. The other thing that is good is they have already given us what are projected um, funds available for title and they've opened that funding or that ability to write grants, which is the earliest I, I can remember it's ever been open. So I'm asking for permission to write. Actually, I'm asking permission for Sheila to write uh, the title <laughs> one, two, and four grant applications for fiscal year 2020. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Hill. Second. Second by Mr. Fisher. Questions or comments on the request for the title grants? Call the roll, please. Hill? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Huey? Aye. Bowman? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Motion carries. Renewal of contract food services, Mrs. Schaefer. Every five years, we're required by the State Board of Education to put our food service contract out for bid, and so it was um, our turn to do that this year, and we um, did that just this past spring and had bid openings on May 3rd. Um, we had three um, companies bid on our food service. It was Arbor Management, Aramark, and a company called Aviance. Um, so we had those bid openings and Aramark was the lowest bid at $468,118 with the highest bid um, at $554,105. So quite a bit of difference. So our um, recommendation would be to continue our relationship with Aramark and um, um, recommend the food service contract with them for the July 19 through June 30th, 2020 fiscal year and the amount of $468,118.10. We've heard the request for the uh, food service contract. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Hill. Second. Second by Mr. Lohan. Questions or comments on the contract? Have you had any issues with our mark over the, you said five years now that? Um, no, right. we have not. We actually, um, Airmark is in the audience tonight and we are actually going to, we do have a, a new food service director that will be coming to us. We did lose Tommy, who was our, our point person um, just here at the end of the school year. So hoping for that to be a seamless um, transition and hopefully fine. So it's been a smooth operation as far yeah. as okay. well how many years have they actually been here well we've had airmark ever since we quit doing our own cap cafeteria which i think was the late 90s so over 20 point years being a say. very yeah. very long history yeah. it's yeah. been a long relationship um one other question um maybe from my perspective as a new board member as far as the rate per unit is has there been an increase um, based on current years? Actually, um, their bid went down from five years ago. So what it means, so basically we're getting charged $1.50 for every breakfast that's served, every lunch is $2.20, and then every a la carte um, is an equivalent to a lunch fee, and that's $2.20 as well. Uh, I don't have, I looked that up, I think it went, I don't know if you guys know off the top of your head, yeah, the last contract was. I don't know the spot. Last contract was, but I think it, it did go down. New contract as well as a Yeah. Contract. So it went down from five years ago. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. For the questions on the earmark bid, call the roll, please. Hill? Aye. Bowman? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Huey? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Motion carries. School lunch price for 2019 2020. So each year, um, we're also required to um, work through a tool that's provided by the um, Illinois State Board of Education that's part of the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act that was implemented back in 2010. Essentially what the tool is, is it works through a, um, a mathematical equation to determine what your lunch prices need to be to get to the point where you're um, increasing paid meal prices to be more equal with the funds that the government is essentially subsidizing for free and reduced meals. So um, last year we were required to raise our lunch price to $2.30. This year when we worked through the process, um, we are required to raise it a minimum of, um, of 10 cents to $2.40. To so we still are significantly lower than what the tool suggests. It's over $3, but um, each year we show effort to raise it 
by that minimum amount than we stay in compliance. Um, so the recommendation this evening would be to, rec to um, increase the school lunch prices for 2019-2020 uh, at a price of $2.40. We've heard the request. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Lohman. Second. Second by Mr. Fisher. Questions or comments on the school lunch price? Call the roll, please. Lohman. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Hill. Aye. Huey. Aye. Wrigley. Aye. Motion carries. 2018-2019 amended budget. Ms. Shaver. So um, there should be a link in your documents that takes you to just a short presentation. And, and for those of you who weren't with us in the fall when we approved the original budget, um, I put in those figures just as a point of reference of, as to where we were. So the, the typical process is for us to um, present the original budget in August and we approve it in September. The last several years, there have been significant enough changes throughout the school year that has created a need for us to amend it. So when you amend the budget, you essentially go through the same process. It has to sit on display for 30 days. We put it in the newspaper. Um, and so that's where we're at right now. And then um, in June, the, the budget will be approved by the board. Um, so this is just kind of an overview of the significant changes that were, were made um, <coughs> to the budget and why we needed to amend it. So if you see in the original budget, um, our ed fund, we had expected it an excess of about $270,000. And um, with the amended budget, we're now at a deficit of $209,000 approximately. <coughs> um, part of the reason for that um, is what we chose to do with our corporate personal property replacement tax funds. Normally, um, we have historically done a 65-35% split between the education fund and the O&M fund. So of those funds, 65% has typically always gone into the Ed fund. When we started having conversations this winter, um, and specifically at the February O&M meeting when we had a lot of uh, tough conversations about how we were going to start funding a lot of facility upgrades that need to be done um, and that was prior to not knowing yet what was going to happen with the sales tax we had a conversation about how could we at least start funding our chilled water system and the the cooling tower that um, basically is our, our air conditioning and so at that time and there's a link there um, for those of you who who weren't um, with us at the time, there's a link to that presentation um, that actually Tim Bonnet had um, prepared for us. And during that presentation, we talked about shifting, starting to shift corporate personal replacement tax to the O&M fund to start to accumulate funds to be able to do that project. That project is approximately three and a half million dollars. Um, and so the plan was to, um, we have, a, we have some health life safety funds still available, but then the plan was to shift the additional two and a half million dollars from the O&M fund, or from the education fund, I'm sorry. So that's essentially what we're doing this year. Um, so we were able to move about $933 from the original budget from the Ed fund to the O&M fund. Um, so we're now sent essentially have about a 30%, 70% split. So we kind of flip flopped it. Um, so with that, and we also um, received, we've already received our final payment. We actually um, received more than we, we expected to receive. So we were able to increase the own in budget by about one and a half million dollars this year by doing that. And so that will help fund that two and a half million dollars um, moving forward that we need for the project. So with the flip-flop and then with the additional funds that we received that weren't in the original amendment anyway, um, that constituted one and a half million dollars that we were able to move. Um, so that was the, that was the major shift. Um, some other just notable revisions that we, we did, we um, did receive some TIF dollars from the city of Pekin um, that are part of the agreement that we have with them kind of been hit and miss on how that calculation's been done in the past, but we did receive about $262,000 from that TIF fund this year. So we adjusted the revenue accordingly in each fund for that. Um, we did some amendments for the title grant that were about $134,000. I 
And um, one of the other things in the Ed Fund, um, even though we moved $933,000, the deficit only reflects the 208 because we also decreased on the expenditure side our special ed tuition by about $200,000. Um, we normally budget around a million dollars every year for that, but it looks like we're probably gonna come in less than that based on um, trends right now. So we um, went ahead and decreased that by $200,000. Um, so those were the major changes in the Ed Fund. And then like I said, the o &M Fund, obviously the revenue side of that changed significantly. And we also um, ended up increasing some expenditures that netted out to be about $83,000 between some um, repairs and maintenance things that came up and some additional equipment. Um, we did have, I guess just as a point of reference, right before graduation, one of our motors <laughs> blow on the chiller system and so we had no air conditioning for a few days. Luckily the weather was cooler and so we survived, but um, that's part of why we had to increase that, but part of also why we're starting to look at what we need to do to, to replace it sooner than later. Um, the other funds, honestly, there wasn't anything real significant, uh, no significant changes in those funds. Um, so um, essentially now um, the process would be to let this sit for the 30 days that it's required to sit for, and then I'll come back to you in June and actually ask for approval to um, approve the amended budget. Okay. So we've heard the request to put the amended budget on display. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Hill. Second. Second by Mr. Loman. Questions or comments? Um, <clears throat> how much additional funding did we get from CPPRT? So we had originally, I think we about half a million dollars more than what we expected from oh. the original budget. Yeah. Goodness. Was that the one that really cut us back big time? Yeah. And then and there was a house bill that was passed that, and so only certain schools who had received 15% or more of their budget that was received by CPPRT, there was a special bill that passed, and we were in that category, so we received additional funding to try to recoup for things that we had lost. And so that was part of, part of the increase, but then on top of that, the estimate that the Department of Revenue had given us originally was just lower than they anticipated so and is that something that we're going to expect to continue will that house resolution continue or is it was that a one-time it's on the docket again this yeah year. Well, it's an annual thing okay yes i think that the schools that it impacts obviously there's not a ton of them but the the ones that it impacts it impacts greatly as we saw you know we we were ready what the one year to do a budget presentation and it was a million dollars but yeah changed overnight mm -hmm. um so I think the thought is to continue to push legislators every year for this because if we don't, it, we know it's turned into kind of a slush fund in terms of where they're peeling money off for and different funds it goes into. So just a reminder to legislators that, okay, when you do this, you're impacting these districts by this much. So that is another uh, piece of legislation that's hopefully gonna go through again this spring and, and spare us or, or help us get an additional I got on that site there and I noticed uh, uh, the report as far as the children. Did they get the one up and running, you said, that, that went out to graduation? Did, yeah, yeah. So they're, they're going to do it in phases, right? They're going to start the repairs in, in, in this year and it's going to probably go, what, to another two well, years? Well, it won't start until actually the winter of 20. Oh, is that what? Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. so it's a couple years out. But I mean, they're just trying the planning to of all of this is just what takes so right, long. Right, right, right. You know, and so... Okay. Or a few years out from the, you know, it'll, it'll obviously happen in the winter. Right. So it's just maintenance at this point. We're You're just, just they're just doing everything they can yeah. to keep it running. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I mean, yeah. 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 Tape and bailing wire. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this money that we're getting from the state and now, I'm sure that, you know, that we're owed a lot from, from the district. We're owed still uh, lots of money from the past. We probably won't recoup any of that yeah. money. Mm -hmm. So everything that we get, what you're saying, which you know, if we can we squeeze them for more, we have to go every year before the legislator, legislators and make sure that they uh, pass
pass the bills to assist the districts. So the first step is for them to always pass a budget, right? That's right, the first right, step. And right, then the second right, step is right, evidence-based right. funding. Their, their continued commitment is, so last year I think $350 million was earmarked for education as part of that budget, which was a huge kickstart to evidence-based funding because it, it gave us money we didn't have access to before. So the thought though is as this plan is implemented that the state will have to continue to pump more than the 350 million to continue to get those schools, which we are tier one, which is the lowest tier obviously, and then you have tier four. So the, uh, the, the, their goal is to continue to get schools that are in those lower tiers equal to those upper tiers. Well, you can't do that unless you're willing to budget more money. So. The, the ask this year is actually more than, I think I saw Friday it came through that mm -hmm. they ask it's $400 million for education versus 350, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Call the roll, please. Hill? Aye. Loven? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Huey? Aye. Wrigley? Aye, motion carries. Reports? Uh, we'll start with resignations. Uh, Meg Flanagan, teacher for the English department, effective at the end of the 2018-2019 school year. Uh, is that Natalia Casey? Uh, personal assistant for special education, effective May 30th. Uh, Joshua Zink, sophomore football coach, effective at the end of the 2018-19 season. TJ Warwick, assistant girls basketball coach, effective at the end of the 18-19 season, and Blake Stout, assistant boys soccer coach, effective at the end of the 18-19 school year. Uh, policy committee did not meet this evening, but I would anticipate a meeting in June. Um, O&M committee did not meet this evening, but I would assume we'll be meeting um, soon as well. Typically we do. Um, I know we typically do one before the school year starts and do a walkthrough. We did talk about okay. how we and then, continue to talk through and work through plans in terms of funding of some of these bigger yeah. projects that if things fall out of that where we feel like we need to have an O and M meeting sure. separate from. Um, but otherwise we know for sure we'll have one in August. Okay. So we can anticipate one in August and possibly one earlier than that. Uh, SAC, FOIA and your report, Dr. Owens. SAC did not meet uh, in May. We had finished our business and actually made board recommendations to you last month, so we did not meet for the last month of the school year. FOIA requests, I'm happy to report, we didn't have any this month. Wow. And then the superintendent's report's pretty short. Obviously, tomorrow is the retirement um, luncheon for um, our district. It's the last time we have uh, lunch together. It's the first day of finals, and then obviously everyone checks out on Thursday literally um, and the one thing just to let you know that we are going to do this year is um, I stole this actually from a different district but we are going to um, we've put together an exit interview which is basically a google form that we are going to send to anyone who's leaving the district you know whether they're leaving to stay home with a child or leaving because they're moving um, we've never collected data on that and sometimes we get asked why is everyone everyone leaving what are the reasons behind it what is you know what are their thoughts so uh, we are going to send i'm going to send directly to those people who are leaving um, this exit interview for them to uh, fill out so that hopefully we can start keeping some data on that and, and i can share that as as time goes on so that is something new that we will do so and i didn't ask you about lmrc but we did not meet we did not meet okay Correct. very good Future agenda items. Are there any items that a board member would like to see placed on a future agenda? Hearing none, we'll move on to announcements. Uh, as just mentioned, uh, retirement luncheon is tomorrow at 1.15. Uh, board assignments for 2019-2020 committees are as follows. I'll serve on LMRC. Uh, O&M will be chaired by Mr. Hill, and we'll have members Steve Huey and Danny Lohman. Policy will be chaired by Secretary Quinn Barra. And Amanda Brown, Terry Fisher will serve on those two, that committee. Uh, RIF will be served by Steve Huey's presence. Student Achievement will also have Mr. Huey and Danny Lohman. And a new addition to the Beacon Insurance Holiday Tournament Committee will be Mr. Hill. So congratulations on the windbreaker. 
<laughs> don't expect to do it every year. There are some people who want them too. What? Right, just a little bit. Um, joint annual conference is scheduled for the 22nd through the 24th of November at Hyatt Regency. Uh, registration and housing must be completed online by the district, so please RSVP to Trudy Dotson if you uh, plan to attend. Uh, if you have any questions about that for the new members here, please reach out to, uh, I will call us legacy members, not old members, but legacy members. Um, who can provide some uh, insight on that uh, that good educational opportunity? Veterans. 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 That's that's a that's a more honorable term. And our next meeting is scheduled for June twenty fourth, six thirty in this room. We stand adjourned.